This is the It's Time to Refresh podcast with Brad Refresh, the podcast about life, music, traveling, shit, literal shit that is, and weird and wacky stories with Brad and a range of guests from the planet Earth. Feel free to share the pod with your pals, your mom, your neighbor's dog, or even your shrink. It's all fun. You can follow our Facebook group called It's Time to Refresh Community or It's Time to Refresh on Instagram. Write into the pod, ask questions, and share your stories. Enjoy the pod! Hey kid, what time is that? It's time to refresh! Right, we're back once again with another podcast. Um, this is episode seven, uh, and on this episode we've got Stu Wright. How are we doing, mate? All right. Good, thank you. Good to be here. <laughs> uh, well, I've been trying to get you on for a couple of weeks now. Is it about, about four or five episodes? But obviously, just trying to get the plan everything in, in time. Essentially, like that's what it, that's what it was. Just trying to get the right time where you were off and I was off. And yeah, I've been wanting you to get on so we can talk local music and, and whatnot. Yeah, good. Um... Obviously, the timing issues, with, as you say, there with work and stuff, it, uh, when you were available, I wasn't, and vice versa, but exactly, yeah. we're here now, so that's the main thing. <laughs> um, well, I just want to get right into it, to be honest with you. Um, we're both local lads, Whitehaven, we're actually about 300 yards away from each other. Yeah. Um, and um, I just want to get into how you got into the music, not me knowing what the local scene was like years ago and stuff like that. Yeah, I want to know how you got into it, bit and and the style of music you got into as well. I'm just intrigued. Right. Well, I mean, it, it all stems back for me, even you know, early teens when you you're just listening to stuff that your mum and dad listened to in the house. Um, a lot of stuff I listened to was early eighties. You Whitney Houston's Gloria Estefan's and things like that. That was the first sort of music albums I knew because they were mum, my mum's music uh, albums um, right. me personally when I started getting a bit older I was into like a lot of the synth stuff like Erasure Yazoo uh, Bronsky Beat Communards and that's where I always think I get this love for synth now yeah. because I sort of grew up with that sort of era um, great so, era to grow up as well like. absolutely I mean I, I was Obviously, I've went lived through the 80s and the 90s when it comes mm. to music, which, I mean, people all say that, oh, when they were in the 60s, 70s, they were the best years for music. But that's the good thing about music. It's different. Yeah. I think every, I, I've, I've been talking about this with some someone at work. And basically, I think everyone, if you're a casual listener of music, not like ourselves, like, like who are quite involved in it, but as a casual listener of music, I think people get caught in like a five year period um, and you notice that with the old school and stuff yeah, you'll have a lot of people who go to old school nights and they'll only like music from say 91 to like 96 and then yeah. there's some that'll only listen from like 94 to 98 like it's just when they come of age say 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 where the first start going out, the first it's the the it's nostalgia that's a, attached to it. Yeah. So for me, it's like like clubland and stuff like that. Yeah. If I heard that nowadays, I don't know if I'd listen to it. I mean, I, I, I probably would because I love it, but it's it's just what comes yeah. out in your time. Well, do you not think now, like with with the grime music that's around now, um, all these young kids love it, and I feel like I'm an old man because like I just don't get it. Eh? Nah. I don't. I, it's really, really popular and it's selling a lot of records. You go on the stream and stuff like that, it's making big numbers, but I'm just like, I don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't, it sounds mental, I just, I just don't. Eh? It, it's funny you say that because, as I say, when, when, I was, when I was younger and I was getting into the scene and stuff, um, my dad also used to come up into the bedroom and he'd be like, turn that down, it's not even music. And, mm. you know, he was into like Bob Dylan and Simon and Garfunkel. Yeah. And, Dr. Hook and all that sort of stuff. So to listen to like my early sort of Italian imports, uh, it was like it's all just synthesized crap anyhow. And it, 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 that's what I said. People get stuck in that era. And I imagine when he was coming of age, they were the artists that were big. Yeah. And it's like, like even even now, like my missus listens to early 2000s R&B. And like, 
it's just one of the things she listens to new stuff and old, and old stuff like like i do yeah but like it's just one of her go-to things and it's like for you i imagine you probably stick your zoo on and you're in a, a nostalgic place do you know what i mean Absolutely. that's just an example like yeah i mean t- to be fair it's like the italian stuff and the old piano stuff i cannot listen to it at all like i couldn't just go now and and say right i want to listen to some music and listen to like a an old mix of me own or something else is <clears throat> I just I only ever listen to it when I'm playing it. Right. Do you know what I mean? If I'm doing if I've if I'm doing a mix or I'm I'm playing at a club or whatever or the stream or whatever, I just I don't know, I just cannot get away with it. My go to stuff is sort of like I like the eighties stuff and I and I like a lot of like how can I put it? Like haunting female vocalists like likes of Christina Novelli yeah she's got an acoustic album it's one of the best albums you can hear oh no uh, oh, you sent me it last week yeah and, I, I and a lot of people just think oh it's Christina Novelli it must be trance or something mm. like that but um, absolutely unreal um, vocalist uh, I listen to like uh, Marina right um, so again it's all just like you know, because I, I just can't, I cannot listen to old school and Italian. Don't get me wrong, if someone sent me a mix, I'll put a new mix up on Mixcloud, yeah. and I was, uh, I don't know, a pent fence or something like that. Yeah. yeah, of course I would listen to it and stuff, um, because I know people's put time in to do the mixes, so that's that's not a problem. But my go-to, whole old school and Italian would be right at the bottom of the pile, and that might surprise a lot of people. Uh, yeah, I, I, can, I can relate to that. Like quite a lot. I've like for me, I I've got like I've been brought up with like so many different influences that that people are shocked. It, like you say that 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 you you go to isn't what people expect. Yeah. Like uh, um for instance, I've drove to gigs. Obviously, I don't drink, so like you just. I'm the driver all the time and yeah. I went and picked other DJs obviously just to save on fuel and that for people so just um, for easiness and then I've picked them up they've got in the car and I've had my USB and you know, my Spotify playlist on or whatever and then they'll get in like oh I didn't know you were in Elvis and I was like ah yeah but then the next yeah. tune that comes on could be like Louis Capaldi or yeah. do you know what I mean um, a lot of people are shocked when I the sales. I listen to a lot of pop punk music yeah. Yeah. Do, you, do you like that type of music or old? yeah it's, it's as I say I'll listen to anything if it's yeah, you know, you know yourself. You can listen to a tune. You can hear something on the radio. Or somebody even that's current in the charts now, and it's a little bit of a foot tap, and you're like, "Oh, what's this?" Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's like she she listens to this this song. At, um, the I've got the the vinyls just up there. Um, Doja Cat, and I, like I heard the tune, this one tune, and I was just like, "Yeah, that's fucking it's decent." I don't really like modern chart music. Yeah. It's a bit it's a bit too I don't know for, for, it's not for me yeah and and then but there's one or two tunes as you say your foot tap and it's just like uh, yeah do you know what I mean like, absolutely uh, and I don't know I, fi- I find that like th- there is maybe 10 or 20% of the people out there like yourself and who like to um, what's the word like the open minded to music so yeah. you could listen to me a rap tune and it's like oh I like this um, or or as you say, like Christina Novelli, like you might listen to an acoustic album, you're mind blown by it. Yeah. But people know you as an Italian DJ, and it's mm. just like, oh, all right then. Do you, does that make sense? Yeah, where yeah. From? I know, yeah, definitely. It's like as I say, when you put something different on, and people don't expect it, they're like, oh, what's this? Yeah. But I mean, currently, when you when you see all the artists and stuff that's out there now, I couldn't tell you ten artists, but. Uh, one artist that I do like, and I've listened to a couple of their albums, is The Weekend. Right. Because again, that's a a Synthian lot of their it. a lot of their yeah. tunes are synth driven. Yeah. Um, and eighties inspired massively. Yeah. I love it. By the way, I uh-huh. don't know, really into it. So, you know, that sort of when I when I first heard like a couple of the Weekend tunes, it, you know, it sort of pricked me ears up, and like I would say to uh, my daughter, um, one of them's nineteen, one's fifteen. Who's that by? And mm-hmm. they'll know. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and that's... But that's it. When you hear a good tune, you know it's a good tune, don't you? Yeah. As an average listener, I do wonder to myself, like, this is this is one of these things, like, obviously, if you know your music history, then it's sort of redundant. But yeah. as an average listener, like, uh, say your daughter of 15 or 19, uh, they hear The weekend. do they know it's, like, 
heavily 80s inspired or is it like this is fresh music like no. I, I don't know I, 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 to them I would think it, it, if knowing them two they would probably think all oh, this is new because I don't think the the sort of look at music the way that yeah, 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 a lot of people I mean. do. It's, so it's a just like, listener, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, they're just a casual listener. That's what the kids are into at this moment in time. So, mm. you know, you sort of follow along. But going back to, like, obviously when I when I started playing sort of what you would call old school and or Italian, um, all the Italian imports and stuff. How old are you? Like, I know... Uh, I always ask people this. I just like to know what what year we're in, and like like when you discovered this music, what what was it at the time? Was it was it acid house or was it was it the piano? Like it was or what? well to to be honest. Like as I say, I was into the eighties sort of stuff. But when when you start getting older and you start going out to like discos and things like that, right. um, I was into like Michael Jackson, uh, Vanilla Ice, MC Hammer, all the yeah. like sort of that because. You know, I loved all the dance moves and things like that. And then you listen to stuff like, I don't know, like Paula Abdul beats. Um, and Rush, that's a tune now. Paula uh, Abdul. Well, tune. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a bit, a bit different. <laughs> that, isn't it? It's it's a quiet tune, but it's, yeah. you know, when you're listening to like stuff like that, and then you're hearing like Technotronic, CNC Music Factory. Right, yeah. That's when I started sort of progressing into like, oh, that's a bit different. Yeah, but. You know, twenty four seven technotronic. Um, how how were you hearing it? Was it was this radio player that you were you were, like, just like that sort of stuff? CNC Music mm -hmm. Factory technotronic and that that was like it was new to me. Um, just going to like under under sixteen's discos, right? Because you know you were listening to as I say your your, your chart stuff, and that's what you were hearing at under sixteen at, at discos and things like Christmas parties and things. Mm -hmm. And then when I started. It was obviously when I was fifteen year old. That's when the boom for music sort of started the, in dance music right. around here. So I mean, I was I was young, but I was going to under sixteen disco, and I was getting the sort of environment of what the adults were listening to because right. a lot of people don't know this, but DJs who worked in nightclubs back in in them times they didn't bring their own tunes. Uh, the, 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 the nightclub the bought the yeah, tunes yeah, yeah. themselves, so they were just buying what was current. So, um, yeah. So then, then at, like you, you, you would hear stuff like Massive Attack, um, Orbital, yeah, and then you would hear things like, um, oh, what, what was that? Uh, so this must have been what, like ninety two or something like that. Yeah, the roof, that, there, I, I'm, I'm crap with dates and stuff, but mm. I was like fifteen. And I was at school. Because, uh, to be honest, a lot of the time at school, there was only a group of us, maybe 10, 15 of us that were into the music, yeah. that sort of thing. Uh, and you sort of got, not skitted, but, you know, people sort of like you looked down. Oh, no, you mean, it, was as all, it was as though you were, you were trying to... Because you've got to remember at this time, the, the, the adults and stuff... They were they were going to massive clubs like Quadrant Park. Yeah. Um, they were going to like Hackett's yeah. in Blackpool. So we were lucky in the fact that the group of lads that we all knocked around together, some of them had older brothers who were into that. So they were bringing tapes right. back from these events. Right. And we were listening to these tapes. You know, like I can remember like going to school on the bus and they'll be like, five of us round a Walkman and one lad would say, listen to this, it's from like Love Shack in Blackpool yeah. or, you know, Ackett's Quadrant Park, um, Hacienda, things like that. So you were listening to it and again, I picked up on it because, again, it was a lot of synth-driven tunes and I was like, oh, I like this. Right. So so the way it was getting spread in sort of, like, you, you white haven't had all, all your life, huh? Yeah. Right. So the way it was getting spread through white haven was it through the through, so it was through the tapes people were going away bringing Absolutely. the tapes back right yeah. right yeah. That that's, makes sense. that's how it sort of started um and then i remember like people would would always go away to you know as clubs that i've mentioned there and mm. stuff and then the old all this is when the old all started right because obviously it was a movement that you know people around here sort of weren't into it but 
it had to creep in eventually. Oh uh, yeah, obviously. And how that how that happened was there was a guy called um Shawn Michaels, Space Face. Right. Um very popular in the old school scene. He's he's not here any any longer, unfortunately. The old um, Love Shack DJ, isn't he? He is. Yeah, he started him, yeah. started at the Love Shack and then he was he was booked to come up here to the old hall. Right. So to me, I always think he's the man that sort of is the man that started this movement for me. Right. So, so you when like. you were getting into it, you would say your inspiration was like a space face type thing, like or, or Absolutely. the Quadrant Park DJs, etc. Yeah, like that but sort of thing. the th- the thing was as well, you, like a lot of people think, like say to me, "Oh, you were one of the first DJs I listened to around the old school DJs and stuff," and. Maybe at my age, fair enough, but there was I can remember DJs before me when I was at school. Oh. Um, I mean, there's names I'll say on here, people will know, and people will be like, well, I've never heard of him, neither. Like, Evesy, a lad from Kells. Right. He was unreal, DJ. He was he was doing a lot of this sort of... St- like, he'll have got into the music when he was going away himself. Right. Um, and he's probably thought, I like that, and he's, and he's played, but there's been no clubs around here for him to play. But then when the old all opened up and they started playing this sort of stuff, so you had Eves, you had Chem, um, a lad from Barra, Gripper. Um, right. Gripper's doing really well now. He's still playing to this day. Yeah. He does a lot of, like, Balearic stuff and he's always, you know, travelling the world and that day, Jen. Danny Maudlin. Yeah. Danny Maudlin started um, a lot earlier than, than I did. Yeah. To be fair, Danny was probably the first person that ever gave me a go on 1210s. Right, right, yeah, right. Uh, I know he, he likes that sort of hacienda stuff and that doesn't he? Like, yeah. yeah. But um, but that's interesting. Like how it's it's sort of come about. Then so you and your group of five mates who, who weren't the cool kids, we you we you going to the old hall? We you get we 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 uh, yeah. I mean, it was one of them. You were listening to the tapes and stuff, and you were like, um, I would love to go to one of these nights. I mean. As I said, we were doing the under sixteen discos, which was in the park in Whitehaven. So to go from like um, the, the back room of the Labour Club, yeah, for for like a, a school disco or a Christmas party or something I know like what you that, mean. to go into a nightclub environment, you know, when you're seeing all the lasers, all the smoke machines, big speakers, massive sound, it was like it was like a game changer, right. That's, uh, that it, it's I can see where you're coming from because I can I I can remember going to your like local work, work men's clubs for discos yeah. or or your village halls and stuff like that and then the experience of what you call a rave like yeah. Oh, yeah, essentially isn't it? Even well, though, that, that's what it was. It was rave yeah. music because back then, um, I mean, it was something I would I was going to touch on. Um, there wasn't a genre of music. You you might uh, you might listen to like somebody would play like. A Ginny track, which is right. an Italian import, or DJ Steffi, which is like, which charted, yeah. and then all of a sudden drop, like, an hardcore tuning, like, it's rave, rave, music, rave isn't signal. It? Yeah. So it was like hardcore, piano, everything was all mixed in. There yeah. wasn't like, you know, you didn't separate your genres. It was yeah. just, you listen to Rosala, Everybody's Free, yeah. or Sunshine on a Rainy Day by Zoe, and then you would have, like, a rich banging I, I, Yeah, tune. definitely, I can... I can, I can I can see what you mean, um, but the the I think it, the way because obviously I like different stuff, uh, of, like a, a variety of stuff. I I don't like the way the music's went where it's all it's you, you're pigeonholed. Yeah, I, I'm pigeonholed as a bounce stage here now. If you come watch one of my sets, I don't just play bounce. It's like yeah. yourself. Like I, I, when we've talked off pod, you've said what what other types of music you like and stuff like that, and I'm like, there's no reason why. You shouldn't be able to play it, but yeah. as as a rule of thumb, you can't turn it to an old school gig and start playing other other stuff because well, it, it puts people off, doesn't it? Do you know well, what I mean? To be honest, right, I, I sort of in in the last. I'm skipping forward here, but just while we're on the subject of it, on the last Madison's event, um, I actually played Run DMC. Right, I'd go off in in my mid- To be honest. No different. The dance floor would just stayed exactly the same. It was just like, a, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> uh, an a cappella of um, Run DMC. It's like that. Yeah. And then towards the end, it's just got the the bass. Yeah. So I just thought, right, I'm going to drop that in because 
um, and the track came to an end and I thought right well so the, the a cappella was just playing and the beat right. so I just dropped another tune over the top of it Right. so it was just you know just to just, leave a bit of boredom because you can get a bit bored if you, yeah uh, like the old school scene nothing against it at all uh, it's get well the bounce scene's getting much very like it to be honest with you um, where you play this, you'll have a, a set of, of tunes you like you'll have 40 tunes mm. and you'll just play them in a different order like the, yeah. when I hear classic sets now you can almost hear what's coming up do you know yeah. what I mean like oh, I've heard these, these set of tunes but I've heard it in a different order yeah. do you know what I mean and and it's not people go out to hear that that's what they want to hear yeah. it's like uh, on the last podcast with, with Doof we were talking about um, Africa Bombata Pompinani I hate the tune I used to love it as a kid but I hate it because of how much it's been played but if you play it you feel, you feel like a dance floor aren't you like it's one of them isn't it do you know it's, something it's one of them tunes right I, I don't like it I never did like it when it first came out but it's one of them tunes I put a lot bit of responsibility on on it getting played around here because they were the sort of tunes at the time that when I was DJing, yeah, you know, when I went, when I would go and get my tunes from Melody House, or I would ring Debbie up or Phil or Callie or whoever, and they would play a load of tunes down the phone to you. They knew what sort of stuff you were into. Absolutely. So they would, I would sometimes I would ring up and say, right, what have you got in this week? And Debbie would say, right, I've I've, I've got these tunes here. I've put these back because I know you're into this sort of stuff. And I would just say, right, no problem, how much is it? She would send them and I would pay over the phone and that would be in there, come up. Right. So you, you sort of played these tunes because, you know, but no, nah, Puppanani, I hate it. I don't mind uh, African ba Bambata feel the vibe. Yeah, it's not a bad tune. It's, it's not, not a bad, bad tune, but Puppanani, I draw the line <laughs> <laughs> There's actually the, the, the B-side mix to it. It's a bit tougher, and I yeah. quite like that. It's, it's, I've heard a couple of DJs play it, and I, it's, it's, it's all right. But it's just, I think it's just because it's one of them tunes, isn't it? It's like, it's you would call it a White Haven anthem, isn't it? It's, oh. it it's, as soon as you could play it at, a, at an 18th disco, you could play it at a, at a 50th, and then it comes on, and dance floor's full. Like, it's one of them <laughs> tunes, isn't it? It's, it's just one of them. But I, yeah, don't, um, I don't know. I'll never experience it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but... Um, as I say, we'll move back to sort of um, yeah. your early nineties and that. Like you, you've, you've, you're learning the tunes. You're learning what's what. You're listening to the rave tapes. Yeah. Where where are you going from there? Right. So obviously we were doing the under sixteens discos, and then you you know you wanted to sample what these raves were like. Yeah. Because what you've got to remember as well, it, it, at round about that time, there was people going to the old hall, and then they were going to like raves afterwards in barns and yeah yeah coniston was big for the raves Massive in the caves and things uh you know so you sort of wanted to experience that and like i was only like 15 16 and it was one of them things you didn't want to sort of go and get blew out if you know what i mean yeah but on certain nights because because the lads who we sort of hung around with who were going to the old or were all the lads yeah um you could blend in with them do you know what I, I mean? Know, yeah, if there's, a, if there's a big group of you and yeah. some, some of them are bigger and, and look, look a bit older, you sort of just float by. Exactly, I so we, we got to experience them and I can I can still remember to this day, first going in there um, and you couldn't see a thing, it was just smoke machines and lasers and stuff going off. And I made a play straight away for, for the DJ mm. because, you know, he, he was sort of folklore listening to on these tapes and you're like... Oh, so that's what it looks like. Um, Do you know what I mean? Yeah, well, as I say, um, on the last podcast, we, we, we were talking about it, and we were like, everyone's got their own church. Does that make sense? Yeah. So for me, like, you, there was always, if you listen to tape packs and stuff like that, like, imagine yourself, you listen to, uh, like, a, say, a Quadrant Park tape. Yeah. You imagine what it would be like, because you can hear the atmosphere in the tape, yeah. and you just imagine what it's like, and then... Uh, like you say, for a, a, a random DJ, like, oh, I want. There weren't celebrities, they were just somebody in the corner of the room. Exactly. So it's like, you don't see them on the front of like OK magazine, yeah. not like that. Yeah. So f f for me, it's like, I wonder what he looks like, and all like that. And you yeah. get there, and it's like. And then you it, see them. It's a, it's a, yeah, it's a reality, isn't it? And yeah. it's like, yeah, I, I'm fascinated by stuff like that, mate, honestly. Yeah. Well, I, I, I love all the nostalgia of it all now. Um, even when you look, if you look back, um, you see it on Facebook and stuff and Instagram all the time. 
um, where people share that snippet of Sasha dropping um, Anthem Enjoy in Quadrant Park. And there must be like... Oh, I have seen that. Three nice. or four I, I, I didn't know what you were on about there. But yeah. yeah, yeah, there's, yeah. There's, uh, it, in fact, it's, I've seen one with him dropping Anthem Enjoy and I've also seen him one dropping um, Art Cobra together. Right. And when when they kick in, mate, uh, to see... And, and, that, <laughs> and that's what we were lucky to be in that sort of crowd. I mean, you're never, ever going to get that again. You know, it doesn't matter how many events are sort of popular. Uh, yeah. Back then... You know, it was it was unreal. It was because it was brand new. I think. Yeah. Is that, is that what it is? It's yeah. Because rave. I mean, a lot of people wouldn't. I I never I never took drugs. Yeah. Um. So I can imagine. You know, a lot of people were into it for. You know, they were going and listening to those those tunes, and when they were dropping, and everybody was loved up, and uh, it's a different. You know, it's thing, just it? an atmosphere where everybody just comes together and. Mm. Um. And the music and the and the drugs probably complement each, each oh, other. Oh, hand in hand, definitely. Like, I, no, there's nobody out there who can say that they're going to go to a rave and not know one is is off the red because yeah. like it, it it comes hand in hand with it, and you can't. It's just one of them things. It's it, it can bring a, a lot of enjoyment for people for for the music. It enhances yeah. the experience of, as I say, like people say when the love doves and that were around that like. You, you you go into a certain club and then a big piano breakdown will come in and as you're coming up it's a big hands in the air moment yeah it's it sounds like it would have been special it's not something i'm interested in yeah. like but it's it, it sounds like it's a moment in their life yeah. where they've, they've it's a it's nostalgia and well it, it's a way to from. it's a way to shut off from everyday pressures isn't it mm. i mean people do their own things and oh, you know got their own vice, mate. yeah and i'll and i'll never judge anybody with what they want to do but you know, when people's working hard all week and they're going out to these nightclubs and, and, mm. and that's the release. Well, I, I just want to touch on it because obviously you mentioned about Old Hall and sort of local, some local places. Yeah. If you talk to sort of the older generation, um, yeah. I'm talking maybe lads in like the, the 60s maybe, um, they were saying when... when all, all the all the humans who are, are all in like the forties now. Yeah. When when the old all came along, it was to it was to compliment Thorpe um, on Sellafield. It was because all these travellers were coming up and they didn't have a nightclub that, where they were hearing this rave music that was from your Blackpool, your Liverpool, Manchester, Glasgow. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So when 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 old all was there. You had all these contractors from away coming to the, well, to the old hall. It's funny it? you say that because, yeah, I mean, the, the, the old hall used to be up on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday nights. And, and yeah, I agree with you that there was a lot of um, travellers that were yeah. up here going to those night, going to that night. But the Friday night, that became like the specialist night, if you know what I mean, for yeah, the yeah. dance thing. They still had the Thursday nights where it would have been rammed ram to the rafters on a Thursday night, yeah. you know, of contractors and stuff, and, and Sundays likely the same, uh, Saturdays, but the Friday night was the, you know, it it was just a specialist night. Yeah, oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I've, seen, I've seen pictures, like, if you look at Egremont now of what it is, where, where, um, where the old hall was, it's sort of a shell of what it was. Yeah. Um, but if you, I've seen photos where the queue goes right down the street. Yeah. And I, when I say right down the street, it's not an exag exaggeration of a thing. It would be literally down by the War Memorial. And you just see, I just, I've seen one from the entrance, facing the entrance, and you could just see people queuing right down in like yeah. twos and threes. Absolutely. And it's like, how we're not going to have that again. It's, it's a bit sad. But, yeah. But what a moment to be like, yeah. to be going out. Do you know what I mean? A lot of people used to like, go to the Nile before they went to the Old Hall um, yeah, yeah. for the Friday night. Um, that was sort of the the place to go on a Friday night. Um, never went in, to be honest. I went in later on when it was diff called different things. Like, mm. I know it was Beano's or something, wasn't it? Because yeah. I remember Jagger and um, Dadden, DJ and in Beano's, um, yeah. when the Old Hall opened again, sort of the second time when it was Jagger and Mackie and yeah. Swifty and, and Dadden and... Uh, George um, but yeah so uh, like as I say you're going in there at a 16 year old and you're thinking to yourself like this is this is good and as I say I made a beeline for the for the DJ um, because I was into the tunes uh, and I was hearing tunes that you couldn't go and buy in Woolies 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, or yeah. W.F. Smith. So I was intrigued and I wanted to know. And to be fair to Sean, he used to be spot on. You know, he wouldn't, he would always, he would always have a crack with us and he would let us know what stuff was. So then, I, then it opened up a new thing of like, then I started buying my, my records from Melody House as opposed to buying them from Woolies and Brooks in, in yeah, White Yeah, yeah, I can, I can see why. So like... I was buying all these tunes because I liked the tunes. I wasn't thinking, right, I'm going to buy this because I'm going to be a DJ. You, you just want to re listen to in your own house just, of what you listen to. Exactly, uh, yeah, exactly yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, back then there was, you know, you would listen to tapes and you couldn't, you couldn't get the names of tunes, yeah. um, you know, like you can now. So you have to do a bit of oh, a... Oh, you can't just get your Shazam out. Yeah, just, exactly. You know I mean? So yeah, yeah. it was a bit of a mission. One thing I can also remember, the first night we ever went in there then was uh, Sean DJ and let's say he had like long hair and you were like, oh, so that's him. But it was weird because he had this telephone in his hand. Right. And he's and he's just like every now and again he's picking this telephone up, do you know the old white ivory looking right. telephones? And I was thinking, what what's he doing there? How's he who's he ringing? And why they wouldn't hear it anyhow because of the music. But <laughs> when it all comes to all using his headphones. He was using eh? his headphones, <laughs> I've been all I, I've never I've never snapped before, but I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. It, honestly, it was bizarre. You know, standing yeah. there with his <laughs> Ed all comes yeah. over with this, and I'm thinking, why is he using a telephone? And and, and, that, yeah. and that's what it was, headphones. And before you were a DJ, you maybe didn't put two and two together no. of what he was actually doing. No, like, exactly. Because I remember listening to the, like dance music, and that when I was first getting into it, and I didn't know that one tune mixed into another the way it does. And yeah. like, I just thought, I just thought it was all one. Like I used to get the tape, and I just thought it was one long tape, like, like one mega mix. Yeah, and I was just, uh, well, you just it, can't think of it, do you? Is a bit of trivia for your podcasters. The first DJ ever to use two decks. Do you know who it is? I don't know. It's a oh, bit of a bit of a sore subject. Jimmy Savile. Oh God. <laughs> Jimmy Savile decided he didn't want to break in between the, mm. you know, having to take the needle off and putting another tune on. Aye. Yeah, Jimmy Savile. I didn't know. I'm that. Full of trivia, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a random one, that man. Aye. No. But, yeah. Now then, now I mean, then. Not, <laughs> now then, now then. But it's like, I mean, a lot of the Chicago DJs, they obviously, they used to do um, remixes on the fly. Yeah. Now, that wasn't something I was into back then, but when, you know, over the last sort of, like, sort of 15 years, when you listen back to, like, Ron Hardy. Magical, isn't it, yeah. Oh, uh, I always say I would love to have gone to the warehouse or music box. Right. Um, like, Ron Hardy, uh, Larry Levan. Frankie Knuckles, you know. Yeah, pioneers, aren't they? Absolutely. Listening back to some of them, I'm like, how did I never, ever hear these? It, as as thing as it is, the, it, the certain things don't take off in certain yeah. areas, and for our area, it, it never really, it but maybe the, just drifted past. But the thing is, as well, I know obviously around here and stuff, but, like, the, um, Chicago is... It's responsible for that type, everything. Yeah. For everything. Ah, yeah, yeah. It you know, house I'm, music fall to the floor, and it that's, that's yeah. essentially where it is. And I know, obviously, that it, you see all these documentaries on um, on Netflix and all that when about this like acid house and all that sort of thing, and they try and make out as oh it was a southern thing, but to me, you know, you've only got to look as far as like the hacienda. Mm. You know, there was there was to me that's where it originated from. It, it didn't. To, for me, down like originate down south. I might be wrong. Yeah, um, I've I've heard loads of different origin stories of like of of house and and um, and thing like and I don't think anyone will ever know where it truly came from. But f from what I know and what I can gather, the the it was it was the Chicago house scene yeah. of like they were making music for all nighters and yeah. um, and th there weren't. They weren't doing it to, to like um, for any money or all like that. It was just stuff that they could play in their sets and yeah. on their on the radio stations and stuff like that. And th from 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 what I can gather and what I've seen and researched and stuff like that, it the it wasn't meant to be as as big as it's got. It's no, just it, it was just the, their own personal it, preference yeah. of tunes. Yeah. It's like they used to get a disco track and where the drop was, they loved it, but. That's ten percent of the record. It only lasted five seconds, and the ninety yeah. percent of the track they didn't like. So all they yeah. done was they would just and, Loop and it, as yeah. I say, remix mm -hmm. it on the fly. 
Uh, I, 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 fascinated by all that. Like, I love the origins of yeah. it all, and then how one genre goes into another, and then and then it evolves into this. And then, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And well, as I say, when they start using the eight to eight, and... mm, it's just fascinating, mate. I love it. Uh, that's it's a whole different podcast in itself. Yeah, it is. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, right. So I'll get back on track then, because as I say, we keep going off on a lot of tangents. But uh, um, that's what we're about, mate. Rather than yeah. Go for it. Well, that's it. It's mm-hmm. just a, it's just a chat, isn't it? I, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm not going to sit here and give you a script. Uh, <laughs> it is it is what it is. It's just right. And I mean, I don't want it to sound all about me. Hopefully, it's you know, there's a few things in here oh. that people's picked up on and thought, oh, I, I didn't know that. It's like I say, I, maybe the listeners don't know, but like what I do is I tell everyone before they come on. I say it's not. In, I'm not interviewing you. Yeah. Get here to have a crack. And well, that's it. If it was an interview, I'm not. I don't want to be doing that. Nah. <laughs> what do you think of this? What do you think? Yeah. Of? I just want. I'm just. I just like you digging want the your story. brain, and we can we can just yeah. go from from there. I'm not. I'm not like uh, the only things I'll ask is stuff at the end, and that's just a bit daft, isn't yeah. it? Um, but yeah, going back into it, you you're sort of getting into the the mid nineties. Where yeah, where, what's happening here? Are you so yeah, I mean. It got to a point where you know I'm buying the I'm buying these twelve inch vinyls and that from from you know Melody House from Three Beat in Liverpool and mm. and it's opening your mind to different music and then obviously you're seeing the DJs in action and you're thinking do you know what the way he's controlling this crowd and stuff and it's intriguing you know it? it's intriguing and and so like you would just go and watch and see what they were up to and then you just sort of right well. I wouldn't mind giving that a go. Yeah. I mean, a couple of my mates, they, they were all into the tunes, but the, you know, they weren't going over to the. To the to there was to myself that. and a, a, a like called Brian Telford Bricker. Mm. Bricker was another um, DJ back in the day. That's you know he's still doing little bits and bobs now. But me and him were intrigued. Whereas the other lads, they were just going because they loved the tunes and yeah. they loved the atmosphere and all that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, it, it then it was like right. I wanna I wanna be a DJ. So when we were going to the under 16s discos, and they were dropping a few tunes in that was getting played at the old hall. Oh. And um, the first DJ I actually heard was Phil Goodall. Right. Believe it or not, Phil was doing the under 18s discos. Um. Uh, Phil's always been a great mate of mine. Great lad. Absolutely brilliant DJ, but he's one of these that's quiet and he won't put his cell out there. He's coming on here, by the way. Is he? Yeah, good, I've asked him. Good. Because oh, cause he will have a tale to tell, because I mean, he, he went all over the place. Mate, mate we sit and like we've, we've, we've talked about fucking Hong Kong non stop. Yeah. I looked at, I, I like go on there and he spent a lot of time there in yeah. the 90s and like, and yeah, he's, yeah. he's a wild one, isn't he? Like, he's just, he's like, he's it's just a great lad. He's he just, you know, fantastic. he's just a great lad. Um, down to earth, uh, do you know, I've never, I've never known anybody say a bad word about the lad. Um, he just gets on with it. And, and as I say, DJM wise, there's not a lot around. I know I'm not one of these who says such and such is better than such and such yeah. because at the end of the day, you're just playing somebody else's music. Yeah. Um, it's all got the same mix and breaks, so people just mix at the exact same places, etc., etc. So, but Phil's one of these out who would never put himself out, but he would do things on the fly that you would like. Ah, oh, that was good. Uh, uh, it's yeah. experimental, and but I'm sure he'll tell you all this when he comes on his podcast. Yeah. Um, so you you were so watching him. I was watching Phil thing. as well, and obviously because I knew Phil, he, you could get more of an in depth crack. And believe it or not, um, on the old old tapes, Shawn Michaels, he would DJ and MC at the same time. Right. Um, not so much as in he would do, li- he would be lyrics uh, no, no, and stuff. Crowd hyping. Yeah, 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 exactly, like crowd hyping and that. So I can also remember this one time we were there, uh, there at this under 16s and there wasn't many people, you know, people just went and listened to the tunes and there was hardly people dancing and things like that. And I was just cracking away at the fill and I said, give us the mic. So oh, that was yeah. my first, believe it or not, was my first interaction with a crowd in in this sort of scene. And I grabbed the mic and I was reciting bloody lyrics that, like, you would hear MC Ari, because MC mm. Ari at this point was then coming up to the old old. Right. Um, and he was on, on tapes Copying and stuff. Copying tapes, essentially. Right? Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, you were just copying Jimmy Ari and... Um, 
So, and that, that's how it started. And I just thought, right, so I, I want a DJ. But I just never, ever knew how I would sort of get a break into into doing DJing. Yeah. Um, as I said, I touched on it earlier. Uh, I knocked around with Bricker, so it was me, Bricker. We knocked around with Danny Maudlin, and Danny yeah. Maudlin got a set of 12 tens. Right. Danny was big into, into his DJing. In fact, when Shawn Michaels came up here, he actually took the name Space Face, and that was going to be Danny's name. Right. So, again, that's another one that a lot of people will go, oh, bloody hell. But Danny had said, go on then. Do you know what I mean? You can you can sort of take that name. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, Danny, I'd, it was one of the first people around here to have 12 tens. So I was taking my tunes down to Danny's house as 16-year-old, like, yeah. thinking, right, oh, and having a mix and stuff. Not known, you know, there was no, there was mix and breaks in tunes, but not many. Yeah. But you didn't know when to put them in and take them out and that you were just... There's no batting. education on it. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely not. And, they, you know, it's just over time that's how it's, how, how it's developed. Absolutely. So um, I remember my first ever gig was, believe it or not, in a village hall. And there was maybe about 50 of us all just knocking around, all, all, all the younger younger right. generation, if you like, ones that wanted to get into the club scene but didn't want to go because they weren't old enough, if you know oh, what yeah, I mean. Yeah. And my first ever gig was at the uh, Big Rig Village Hall right. on two hi-fis. No mixer. Aye. No... Oh, so you're playing one tune. As no there. sound system. Right, I see. Absolutely no sound system, no lights. In fact, what we done for lights... Remember when you you go past a skip and there's a light flashing on a skip <laughs> to say that like warning? We took a couple of them and just chucked them in, but that's all we were. That's all I was doing. DIY just, rave. Just do what DIY. So there was no gains or out like that. Yeah. If you had a, a record that was better pressed than others, you know they were coming in at different volumes and that. But that was the first ever sort of interaction I had as a DJ. Um, if you if that's what you wanted to call me, yeah. Oh, right. No, well, you, you are being a disc jockey. Yeah. That's, that's essentially yeah. what it is. I know you're not being the 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 what you would be known as, but you're still yeah. entertaining people with music and like 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 being a DJ. I know it sounds daft, but like I remember like when we were younger, we'd we'd have like little house parties and that with like mates, and I'd. I'd be the DJ, but what I'll, all I'll be doing is I'll be putting the tunes on the i file and, uh, okay. and the next... You're not mixing tunes, but you're keeping that crowd... You're reading the crowd and you're... Yeah. You, what do they want next? What do they want next? What do they want next? And the, the, to me, that's that's part of DJing. Of course like, it is. You, absolutely. I, I know just, you're not beat matching or not like that, but yeah. you're... Right. These lot, they're not really feeling right. Get this one on. Right, bang, the right back into it. That, that, yeah. That's what you were doing on two high fives, going from one to the other. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, just exactly what was said earlier. Like... I don't want to keep saying his name, Jimmy Savile, but like, <laughs> it was, you just didn't want to break in the music because you heard the tapes and there was no breaks in the tapes. Yeah. So you were just, you know, mimicking it uh, sort of thing. Uh, right, so that that was my first ever sort of thing, a gig, and I decided, you know, I wanted to be a DJ. I mean, I was never, ever going to afford Technic 1210s uh, uh, back, back then. And t- to be fair, I never, ever, ever actually owned a set of, Decks right. in, in all my time DJing uh, in the early days. I never, I just like, I, as I say, I would I would uh, have a go on Danny's. Right, so whoever had a set of decks, you'd just get your records around and yeah. learn on the fly. Yeah, sort of thing. So, so yeah, a lot of it comes down to like Danny who was learning, who, mm. who learnt me. Um, but I knew I was never ever going to, you're seeing all these like Citronics and all these, you know, all these copy. Mm. Turn- but they're not techniques now. No, they're not oh. turn- and, I, and I thought, I'd, I don't really want to sort of buy them just in case it's just a fad, <laughs> yeah. if you know what I mean. But fast forward, I would say a couple of months after going to the old hall um, and then leaving school, I was glass collecting in Captain Senny's. That was that was my job. Right. So I wasn't I wasn't earning a great deal of cash. But you were around it though. But I, but I was around like sort of the nightlife, if you like. Yeah. And they had twelve tens in there. 
Right. So like before my shift, I would like, oh, I would I would go and have a look and, you know, I figure it out, figured it yeah, out, sort yeah, of thing. Yeah. Look at it. What what's this mixer and all that, um, you know. So you would you would see how the sort of setup worked and things, and and I would think, yeah, definitely, I would love to be able to to own a set of twelve tens or twelve hundreds as they were, um, but just knew it was like out of my price range. But as luck had it. One day, the DJ didn't turn up at Captain Senny's. Right. And the manager, um, Clive Smitham, at the time, he says, like, what are we going to do? We've got no music. And I said to him, I says, look, Clive, I says, I've got loads of records at home. I says, but it's not what you, you're usually playing, are you? Right. You know, you're usually playing your chart stuff. I, I said, I've got some dance stuff. He was like, I don't care. Just go and get it. We need some music on. Right. And so here we go. He's me on twelve tens in front of an audience. Aye. So I obviously picked up a little bit off, off you know, using Danny's and stuff. So this full night is me banging out <laughs> tunes like SLD, getting out, Unity, Unity, all yes. these tunes you were in at the old hall, and like you know, instead of your chart music. And there was a lad in. Uh, because, I mean, you take it, it was rammed all night and that's where people went before they went to the park and things yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was a lad who worked in the park and he says, hey, yeah, he says, I didn't know you DJ'd. And I said, well, I don't really DJ. I said, I've got all the tunes and stuff and there was nobody to DJ uh, tonight. So I sort of stepped in. He says, you should come over the park. He says, because, like, th them tunes would be would be awesome. I did, I... So to cut a long story short, we basically, he says... I think it was about two weeks later, I said, look, I'll come over after my shift and I'll play. But what you've got to remember in the park as well, it was two levels and it was all the chant music and stuff downstairs. Sure, and right. it was a lot of chant music upstairs with the odd tune, dance tune, yeah, yeah, yeah. Odd dance tune in. So it was like sort of going in and playing different, if you like, different music. Uh, not, not what the client tells you. Yeah, but. you know, you would you would hear like REF, We've Got To Live Together and that because things like that charted, a lot of Dream Frequency stuff charted, uh, uh, a lot of Love Decade stuff. But like, you know, you were going in and you were, you sort of, I felt it was taking it up a notch. Right. You know, because these, these are the tunes that were getting played in like Love Shack, um, you know, Hackett's, Jenks Bar, it's gone. It's it's big. It's it's transitioning now yeah. from from your y your bar yeah. pub to this is this is a rave. Oh, this is oh, what oh, we're gonna club. play. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah like. So I, obviously, I just thought it was a one off, um, and I played all these tunes, and then uh, it, it was a lad called David Armstrong, Zippy, and Zippy says, says, "Why don't you come back next week?" And I was like, "Yeah, spot on. I will. I." So I went back the next week and he says to us, I'm packing in. And I was like, ah. Oh. And I was thinking, I've just got a foot in the door. Right. And I mean, I was only 17 at the time, so I shouldn't have even been in the place. Right. And I was thinking, so that that's it now. I'm back to square one. And he goes, no, why don't you take it on? Uh, I was so like, he, was sort, he was sort of lining you up really, wasn't he? And I was like, like well, I I, how can I do this like by myself? It's like four hours. I work at Captain Senny's. He said, no, just pack Captain Senny's in and... And come and work. You start at nine o'clock. Oh. Um, you know, you can play all night by yourself if you want, or you can get other lads in with you. And I says, well, look, I'll, I'll do it, but do you know anybody else who can help me? And he says, funny enough, I do. I know another lad. Um, he plays similar stuff to you. Um, I'll bring him down next week, introduce him, and then that's me done, and it can be you two doing it. Right. So it's like, I oh, fair enough. So I packed in a Captain Senny's and stuff, went over with couple of boxes of records for my first night at the park which and he introduced us to this lad Davin Cherry all oh, right all right so that's how I met Darren I, I didn't know who Davin was beforehand or anything like uh, that I think he was similar to me he was obviously older than me so he was going to the old old more on a regular basis uh, big friends with Jagger yeah who again became for me one of the pioneers around there yeah um, absolutely Sean, Sean took Jagger under his wing yeah. Um, Jagger went to like Love Shack and stuff like that. Yeah. So it, it seemed right, obviously, myself and Darren. Mm -hmm. And we both had the same sort of idea of we wanted to change upstairs into something completely different to downstairs. Yeah, aye, absolutely. And, and that's why we sort of hit off straight away because 
you know, we had all these imports and things like that. So when you met him, yeah. right, um, did you have a, like, when you, all the tunes you got, did you have a similar collection or, or was, yeah, was, I mean, was it the same style? Yeah, I mean, we had a lot of duplicates and stuff, but... Um, but so you were on, you're on the same wavelength we were on straight the same, away? With... We were on the same wavelength straight away. Now, round about this time, to me, this is when you are old school, like you love decades and your SLDs and your Unity and mm. all your piano, Rhythm Foundation, all that sort of stuff, was starting to change into like your synthy stuff. Right. So at the time, you, you, you had your Jenks Bar and you had like Chris Baker, yeah. Andrew Dean, John J, Matt Bell, um, who... They would come up to the old hall as well. All yeah. those, apart from Chris Baker, it was always like John Jay would come up, Matt Bell would come up um, to have this sort of dialogue with Cumbrians. Yeah. Because what would happen is people would go to the old hall on the Friday and then on the Saturday they would all meet in the White House, Aye. Um, which was run by Cumbria Leisure who owned the park and owned the Pagoda. A little bit more trivia for you. I knew that one, mate. Did you? Aye. Um, so, and then people would go to the to the White House on a Saturday and then decide where they were going on a Saturday. You oh, know, yeah, yeah, go yeah. Jenks and stuff. So, you know, it was good to have, like, some Matt Bell, Chris, uh, John Jay, yeah. MC Irie and that up here. And they, then, they were just promoing themselves, they were, really, Yeah, they were dragging they? the yeah. crowds up here on a Friday yeah. and the crowds were then going elsewhere on a yeah. Saturday. So it, it all made sense. Um, so, yeah, you were, you were starting to get, like, a lot, of, lot more synth-driven right. tunes now. So this must have been 94... Onwards, 95, you, you tell me. I was, right. eight, I'll have been 17, 18, probably right. 18 by now. When because there was a couple of years when, uh, well, a couple of months when we were playing stuff like House Corporation, I know, can do a project out of control, right? People right. who were into the earlier stuff will know exactly what I'm meaning yeah. here. Uh, fall for money, um, a moment in time, all that sort of stuff, and then you started transitioning into your like, um. Like Far Getters and yeah, yeah, yeah. 49ers were making a bit more synth driven tunes. And so, was you, this more like the, the natural progression, or were you still following what the other lads from away were doing? Was their style changing as, as was yours? Well, yeah, because as I say, as I said earlier, I was buying tunes from Melody House, so I was ringing up and asking for the cut and stuff. So Obviously, Melody House and, mm. and, and Jenks and Zone and everything were all, in, in, you know, because uh, obviously Phil and Debbie have ran Zone and Melody House, mm. they ran Melody House, Melody House promotions. So whatever they were playing, we You're were, so, it up your we, right, we right, were okay. sort of playing as well because, you know, that was what that was what was yeah. available. Yeah. You know, and, and as I said earlier, Debbie would know the sort of stuff that we wanted. You know, I wouldn't go in and she would start rap pulling out tunes that would, chart and things like that she knew i was into the italian imports and that's what her djs were playing right yeah so, so it was just, just a progression of the how sound the music of, yeah. went right right so you're playing the symphony stuff in the park and that how yeah. was it going off with the, with the locals into it straight away or were you were you having to like push it a bit like um you, you had a you had a core of people because what you've got to remember, the people who were like really into the dance music, they were going away on Saturdays. Yeah. It was just if they couldn't go anywhere, they would, you know, they would come, come into in, the park because uh, they, no, they would know there was a similar similar vibe going right. on. So yeah, it 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 took it took the transition seemed quite easy if if um. if I don't say so myself because it was like again people were still into your Jenks and yeah. You know, and then then a bit seamless then. Was yeah. It? yeah, yeah, right. Okay. So it was sort of do you know we because we were following um, the sort of Blackpool yeah, crowd doing, and influence. Yeah. See, see, the, the, I was, I wanted to ask this because I wasn't around then. Yeah. But in retrospect, right, there's there's a big divide into old school heads, and like I I just know this from from going old school nights and that, yeah. and it's like. You get those who, who are like the, the 92 piano house, and yeah. then you get those who are like the, the 95 sort yeah. of synthy stuff, yeah. and it's like one or the other. Whereas during, going through at the time, yeah. I just wanted to know was it all of a sudden and you were getting a different crowd, or was it was it it's just natural progression and it's, it sort of it's, fell? At the time, you just think it's a natural progression, but when you look back, it's like, it, it's like even now. Uh, like the earlier stuff, you didn't get 
the people who were older than me going to like zone at the venue, yeah, yeah, if yeah. you like, uh, because the synth had moved on. It, it, sorry, it, it progressed to synth music, um, but you didn't get the same sort of crowd. Like yeah. when when I look back and I picture who was in the old hall on those Friday nights the first time round, when I picture who was in the old hall the second time round when it was different, the synth, yeah. Yeah. completely different. There was maybe the odd one or two that had gone, yeah, but it was a completely different crowd argue, altogether. Yeah, absolutely, and yet I sort of can see that now as well. Because I played at an event called Unity in Carlisle a couple of weeks back. Yeah. Uh, big shout to Claire, by the way, mm-hmm. for, for that. Um, and that was more geared up to your early 90s. Right. So you were getting a certain so you were clientele, getting, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, obviously, West Cumbria and uh, Carlisle. Um, is that Andy and Andy as well? Oh, I yeah, mean, absolutely. I always found it was a bit more sort of marketing car because it would have been like a city, if you yeah. like. But that that clientele that was there, I couldn't imagine them being in, like, going to a Madison's event. Yeah, yeah, I understand. I and understand vice versa. Yeah. You might get the odd one or two. But not the whole crowd. But yeah. not the whole crowd. And, and again, it's a perfect example because you've got Madison's that's it's thriving at the moment, the reunions mm. and stuff, um, and you're getting a massive crowd. That's all right up for it. Whereas I played at Unity as well, and it was a totally different crowd, yeah. but they were all up for it. Oh, yeah. Exactly. All on that, the same yeah, that's, what I was, that's what I was wanting to get at. Yeah. They are, they are, there is a division with, the, with but that. But at the time... It was a smooth you transition. Did, you didn't sort of see that. You just thought that's what everybody's progression was. But, yeah. again, you were getting all the people who were settling down, having kids, which, yeah. Oh, yeah. which what I done, eventually. It, ha- it happens now. It, 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 you notice it's like a six-month cycle. You could go and play out in Whitehaven... And six months later, you've got a whole different crowd in. There'll be one, obviously, the one or two that's the same move thing. But as it's just a new cycle constantly of new faces and and like just as you get to get to know people, that right, that's them settled down. Like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's yeah. sort of how it, how everything happens. Um, so sort of moving on, you're doing the, these park things. Was this every weekend? Is this is this? You this were, was this was every Friday Saturday. Right. Every Friday Saturday night. And then you were getting the sort of regular faces in, sort of building up a following. Of it, yeah, really. I mean, it, it, it was one of them, again, we were sort of lucky to DJ in in that era because it was rammed every Friday and Saturday. Right. You know, you're talking like 800, you DJ into like yeah. anything up to 800 folk uh, right. on a Friday and a Saturday. It did get to a point, though, further down the line where Fridays sort of died to death because likes of the old old had opened back up and, Right, you know, you had Jagger, Swifty, and Mackie down diluting at that point. Yeah, yeah. you know, half there, half there. And, yeah, yeah, and then eventually, you know, I just, I just said to Raymond, the the manager, there's, there's no point opening upstairs on a Friday, because you, you weren't getting the full full sort of thing, uh, and rightly so, people were going to the old old because it was a bit, it was a better night, it was better geared up. Mm. The, the the park to me could have been one of the best nightclubs around, um, but it was just totally run wrong yeah yeah i think f- from what i can gather it, the, the split should have been more thing there should have, it should have been it should have been you've got your chart and like that you, should have been in the in, um in what, what, what's the word for it sort of like you uh sort of i don't know what you call it, like a uh, margaret and dave go out on a, on a, on a saturday night out yeah. you've got your pop music you can sing along to and then upstairs a clear divide of yeah you're entering a rave yeah does that make sense yeah, so, yeah. um well, what I was going to get at is, see, during this time, was it just you and Darren that were doing it? No. Um, um, so we was getting people in? Or yeah, was we, it, we, we were getting uh, Bricker. Bricker would do it because Bricker was um, DJing as well at this point. Uh, Phil Goodall. Yeah. Um, Phil had left and went on to Pastures New and Abroad and stuff. But when Phil came back, Phil would DJ with us. So, yeah. And then um, I asked the lad to come down who was new to the scene uh gary x uh he doesn't dj it out anymore yeah but um uh, he was another he was known as a resident dj at the park right uh jagger would do the odd uh, night bits and bobs out. little bits and bobs when he would because i mean at this point jagger had moved to blackpool and yeah you know so you hardly ever seen him when he came up he was coming up to see family and he would come in and he would have crack with us and stuff and um uh, but yeah 
So then, so we we doing the the sat moving up like further on. You're doing the Saturday nights. We what 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 else were you doing around this time? Like me personally, yeah. um, I was doing nothing. Um, for me, it was just DJing in the park on a Saturday night. But as I got you know, I got till about eighteen, nineteen, and then the old hall was on the on the go. Um, I got. I done a guest night at the. That's not me, by the way. That's Brad's dog. <laughs> um, I done a guest night at the old hall. Um, we obviously I knew Jagger well, knew Mackie well, knew um, Darren and stuff. So I done a guest night at the old hall on a right. Friday, one Friday night, and a couple of months later, I wasn't sort of getting anywhere or anything like that. And then the old hall was burnt down. Right. Um, I don't know if you can remember that. Uh, no. no, no, you wouldn't. I've heard the story. I've heard the You've story. Heard the story stuff, but like, right, yeah. yeah. So the old hall was no more. And, uh, I mean, that was at the time again. That was like the sort of your place to go on a Friday. Park was the place you went on a Saturday. Uh, but Mackie and Swift, they were um, they were gonna go and off onto a new adventure. Right. And. So basically, this time they were looking for work and stuff. Uh, but Madison's had started on a Friday as well, which, right. which Bricker was doing the Madison's. So Bricker had said to me, "Why don't you come and do a Madison's?" So I was like, mm, I, I, "You know, I, I, I sort of wanted in an ideal world, I would have wanted the park to have got yeah. popular again on a Friday, and then I didn't have to sort of go out my comfort zone." Yeah, but I did. I went. I went Madison's um, with Bricker. And I think I, I was only there maybe about four to five week. Mm. So, you know, maybe five, I worked there five nights. Because uh, as I say, it's not like what it is now where it's an event every couple of months. It's, it's it, a weekly thing. It was a weekly yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, so stayed there for a couple of weeks. Um, and in the meantime, Swifty and Mackie got sashes at Silith. Right. So they asked me, did I want to go to Silith with them? Where's, where was sashes at? It was... Um, when you when you come round onto the main Cobbley Road, mm. there's a there was like a little shop just on your right hand side, right? And there was a shop, and then Sashes was on, oh, downstairs, down right. the stairs. Okay, I've always wondered where that yeah. was, you know, because um, obviously, obviously you hear about it. And... Yeah. So yeah, I so I then I decided. And I know it sounds a bit shit on Bricker and and stuff because I mean we've grew up together. Mm. And I just I, I thought no I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go gonna go to Sashes because Mackie and Swift had told me they were getting um, uh, MC Sweat mm. as, as resident MC yeah um, and at the time he was like quite a popular MC and I thought I wouldn't mind working I with, 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 with Carl um, so yeah I made the I made the jump to Sashes so there was me Mackie Swift and Sweat. And then we got a lad from uh, Bolton called Jay Walsh. Right. Oh, yes. And nice. everybody, everybody who knows who Jay is. Yeah. The uh, wizard. The wizard. The wizard. So Cloth. I'm like 18, 19, and them two were MCing for me. Mm. It was like, you know, at the time they, they sort of complimented each other. They were absolutely brilliant. I know you're going to get people who say wizard's better than sweat, sweat's better than mm. wizard, Ivy's better than breeze, breeze is better than Ivy. Yeah. You know what I mean? But to me, they were all different. They, they they were all they all had their own style, and you know I wouldn't I wouldn't put them in a ranking order. They were all good lads, all great with me, all took me under the wing. I, I, do I think it's good about this. Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. But what I think's great about it is each MC. So whether you say Breeze, Irie, Wizard, Sweat, yeah. they all had an individual style. They like, did. The, so the, you were saying you can't rank them. It's because you can't rank them. The, you can't. The, the, they didn't all try and be one person they're all they're all doing their own thing like obviously you listen to wizard yeah sounds nothing like irie like two, exactly. two, two, two different worlds yeah but they were doing the same job and yeah. I, I, lo I love that I love and that. that's why i thought sashes was really was really good and it worked in regards to the mcs because they were two different lads you yeah. know wizard and sweat sweat was more uh well wizard was more lyrical sweat was more like get people up type mm. thing but but they could both do Either each job, other's yeah. style yeah. Uh, and that's why it worked and to be fair it was it, it's I always say the best club in Cumbria I've been in was all all first time round yeah I don't think anything will ever beat that for me I think that was because I was 
Time and a place, isn't it? Time and a place. And it probably added to the excitement because I was uh, I shouldn't have been in there. I was too, you know, I was underage. It's so been th- brand new as well. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's- so I, I always say that as the thing. But the best, the, the best nights I ever, I ever played at in Cumbria. I mean, everybody, most people know me for the, for the park, and they would probably say I would select that. But for me, it'd have to be Sashes. Right. And don't get me wrong. That was because of the like the people, the crowd, the people I was DJing with. Uh, no disrespect to any of the others, the yeah. park, because brilliant nights. Madison's, brilliant nights. Madison's is the only one that's still yeah, yeah. going now. Um, like, Beaches took on the the Madison's reunions. He's mm. been doing them for over 10 years. Well, about 13 or 14 years now. And that's the only ones that's getting the, the people in in regards to reunions. Yeah. Um, but, and none of the others don't did. Like, yeah. you could put a park reunion night on next week and you would maybe have 20 folk in. Yeah. You know, where it, whereas the Madison's ones, you're getting a crowd and, and, and you are getting people coming from away as well, which is good. So, we're back. We had a little break there. Um, we got up to the point of Sasha's being your favourite. Yeah. Um, well, let's let's move sort of forward. Like, how many people were you getting in Sasha's on a, on a weekend? Oh, uh, I don't know what the capacity was, but... It was it was rammed every week. And mm. I remember we were getting people coming and getting turned away because it was that popular. Was you it know? a big room? Not really. It mm. was like an underground... It, that's the thing I liked about it. It was like an underground basement, so it was dark and it was, mm. you know, it was Love dingy, it. if Love you it. liked. But um, it just... Everything just complemented each other. Aye. Now, I mean, take it at the time, you were getting... Um, you were getting bands coming from Scotland, like your Dimensions and yeah. people like that. We were actually the first people that got Dimension on in Cumbria. Right. You know, so that was new to them. Uh, we got Dimension, uh, Ultimate Buzz. Yeah, class. So these were firsts for, like, for Cumbria. Class, class. Um, I don't know if Sasha's is classed as West Cumbria. Like, uh, no, it's Cumbria. But it's Cumbria as, yeah, a, yeah. As, a, as a whole. And, I mean, like... So as I say, you had these nights, you had, you had Madison's going on at the same time, you had, you, you probably had nights going on in Carlisle. Yeah, the, the scene was alive. It was like, alive yeah, and yeah, kicking, yeah. Uh, I mean, you were filling, you know, clubs were filled, it didn't matter w- where you went. If you went Madison's, it was full, if you went to Sasha's, it was full. Yeah. You know, now you couldn't have uh, a Madison's night and a... A Sasha's reunion mm. at, at the same time the, because yeah. it's to the same crowd isn't exactly, it? and you know, and it and it wouldn't work. And obviously, I mean, Beachy being a good promoter, he would he probably he wouldn't even have a a night that yeah 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 that staggered for the respect of his brand and the respect of the person's brand. Absolutely. So, but yeah, you know, you were rammed every single every single night that mm. you, that you played there. Right. So let's move forward. What, what was next for you? Like, so you've right. done so Sashes. So Sashes came to an end because it was, it was getting to a point where there was trouble. Right. Um, now, the, the guy who owns Sashes, Paul Blake, he, Sash, the, the, the nightclub and the arcade and the shops and everything that's all associated yeah. with, in Silith, Paul own, owned all those and it was like a family-run business and it right. had been passed down years and years. So obviously he wasn't going to jeopardise his family business just for, for the, the, the nightclub night right. when his, his niche would have been like summertime when Family families oriented, and all that. Yeah, yeah. So I don't, I, you know, I don't blame him for cutting the night short. It was a shame, but things happen. Mm. Uh, so then it was just a case of, right, what do, what do I do now? Mm. Um Madison's was still going strong. Um, you know, you had, you had people like Chris Baker, uh, Matt Fear, Steve Roberts, uh, Frenzy, uh, Charlie, Mad J. They were all playing at the... at the, So, you know, I wasn't going to just get on an event like that. Yeah. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't popular Inver- in yeah, the yeah, fact yeah. that it would be like, oh, he's not working now, right, we need him on sort of thing. Like, mm. some DJs could command that sort of status. Um so I think what we what we done then was, because um, I, I got really friendly with with Swifty, yeah, uh, another great lad, absolute diamond of a lad, um, brilliant DJ. Not many more super superlatives I can say about him. To be mm, fair, yeah. Um, but he wanted to carry on these, you know, these nights, these Friday nights, um, the old all open back up after. 
it, it had burned down. Right. So we got the the gig there. There was me, myself, Swift. I think it was just us two to start with. We were going to see how it went. And, and we had Jimmy Irie right. doing a couple of nights with us. But to be fair, we were we were on at to nothing because it was never going to command the type, the type of crowd that it had just yeah, before yeah, the yeah. fire. Uh, people had sort of moved on and gone elsewhere and stuff. And... To be fair, I noticed a, a slight change in the in the in the tunes because we didn't go in and promote it as an Italian or an old school night. Me and Swifty were starting to play like a bit of house music, right? Um, so we sort of geared it up as that sort of night. Maybe in hindsight, we maybe shouldn't have done that. We should Everyone have love Italian, mate. Well, well, that's it. You yeah. know, we should have we should have maybe just opened it back up, but we didn't want to sort of like open it back up same and, old same old and same old same old sort of thing um so we done that for a couple of weeks we persevered with it for a couple of weeks but it just wasn't getting the numbers and stuff i mean in this day and age with all the social media we could maybe push it a bit more yeah sort of thing but at the time you know you you, you relied on flyers in chip shops and posters right. on walls and things so it didn't sort of work um right. and after a couple of weeks we just knocked that on the head and I just went back to the park and tried to, you know, just, re, re I was just it. playing, really. Yeah. It was more like, I mean, as I said, I never had decks or anything like that. So my playtime on decks and stuff was actually on the night. Right. So I would sometimes go in on a Thursday night. And before Thursday night started, um, the DJ was DJing on Thursday night. They were playing like 60s, 70s, 80s and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. But be an hour before the club opened, I would go in and just, you know, have I'll ratch through yeah, the yeah. new tunes that had been sent up from Debbie. So, right. Uh, but yeah. Excellent. So, well, at this point, are you, are you sort of like, are you finished with with a residency as such and you were just doing spots? I'm still still resident at the park right. every Saturday. Um, as I said, these gigs that I was taking on were Friday night, so it worked. Yeah. Um, so Saturdays I was still still doing the park, and but I sort of then started to change the style of music I was playing. Right. Again, reiterating from what I said there about me and Alan playing house music. We started playing a bit more housey stuff and I tried to in bring that in right. at the park. But I was getting stuff like, play people talk, uh, play, yeah. it, play such yeah. and such. Uh, what, what, what are you doing playing all this sort of stuff? But at the time, I was get, I was on quite a few um, mailing lists. Right. So I was getting a load of like... Um, brand new stuff. Brand new yeah. tunes for free. As long as you filled in the, the little Response. slip that yeah, yeah. came with it and stuff. And, you know, you had to send flyers off to prove that you were DJ and then you weren't just blagging free tunes and stuff. Yeah. So all that was covered in that and that was fine. Uh, so, yeah, I would just send... I would be playing all these new tunes and it was win-win for me because I saw that... I spent six months on the dole. Right. So I had no income at all. So it, it sort of, like, came at a good time. I was getting all these tunes for free. So I was trying to incorporate her playing it and Swifty was playing with us and but it just wasn't and it what used to wind me up was uh, now in no way <laughs> or shape or form am I trying to compare these clubs, but people were then going to like tall trees and things like that and they mm. were listening to it exactly the same tunes that I was playing. Yeah. Right? But oh we went tall trees, what an amazing night. Yeah, but I'm playing them tunes as well. Oh, no, I'm playing your Italian. They, they went to the park for Italian. Yeah. Um, I touched on the last podcast. You obviously won't have heard Doof shit because he wasn't yeah. released. But um, my, my dad had went out in the park and that, and he he, were, he was an MC in the park for a while. You might have knew him, you might not have. But anyways, um, it... It was always it, it, it's Italian. Yeah. It's Italian. You, you don't yeah. go in, and you wouldn't if if our cartoon was on. You're like, what the fuck's going on? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and it was always Italian, Italian. Yeah. You you can't you can't rebrand something as much as you can try. Yeah. Uh, like I've tried doing things in the field. Uh, you try to rebrand something, and if it's got that that to it, then yeah. Like it, it's one of them. We were victims of our own success. It, to be fair. It's like marketing. If you said we're going to do a park reunion and you did go and play all them tunes, it's like no, we had Italian on in the park and this yeah. is what it was. 
people talk or yeah. nothing and it's like that's that's what it is yeah. isn't it yeah absolutely absolutely mate. so but as i said to, to go from like chart stuff and that and then then bring in the like old school and then the synth and stuff uh again that's what people know it for i mean the people know it for a lot of people around here especially in whitehaven working and they met their partners in the past. Yeah, that's what it is, isn't it? You know, yeah, yeah. so it's got that side of, it's not just, it, it was known because it was playing Italian and stuff and we were DJing there. You know, it was mm. it was one of the only really places you could go on a Saturday night. I mean, when we first started on Saturday night, you had to go in with dress pants on and shirt. Yeah. You know, uh, and, and that's the culture we changed. Do you, not, do you not think, though, when I was saying before it's church, <laughs> it was people's church, do you know what I mean? Like, Well, you had that or Gallagher's. Yeah, it, like well, p p if you if you were a parkhead, yeah. you went to the park. You, yeah, like, that 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 was. Oh, it had its crowd. Do you know what 100%. I mean? Hundred percent. Yeah, and if you were a Gallagher's, you were a Gallagher's. You, went to Gallagher's, you go, yeah. yeah. Like, but the, it was it was people's fucking mosque church, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. It's, it's, it was. See, I didn't see it as I just seen it as that's where I worked. But do you not think, but though, from retrospectively a, yeah. looking at it now, it was right. This is. This is we had a, t a special moment in time, and yeah. this was it. Oh, absolutely! Yeah. When I look back, when I like look back on like sort of, um, you know, you've got you've got to remember there wasn't just me. There was, as I said, there was Daz, there was Bricker, there was mm. Gary X, there was Phil Goodall. You know, over over that time period that I was that we were actually there, I, I hope we did create a legacy. And mm. to be fair, when people think of the park, I think it does that's the year that people remember the most absolutely absolutely yeah um which which is good um but again going going back to like trying to change it to house and stuff yeah. that was the the sort of final straw for me when it came to djing and stuff i just thought well i want to play something new uh, right. it's not working but all this new stuff's getting played elsewhere you know elsewhere i didn't want to travel to dj that mm -hmm. um I mean, I'll, t I'll touch on it. I won't go into detail on it, but when, when I look back, um, I used to have, like, panic attacks. Right. And the first thing I used to think of when I got offered a, a gig or anything, how can I get out of this gig if, I, if I'm 10 minutes into my set? You know, so I didn't want to be uh, you, the well, length of breath of the country yeah. or out like that. That was the first thing I thought. No, what sort of... Um, how much money will I get? Hmm. Will my profile get raised? Because it would, to me, it wasn't about raising a profile. It was just I was doing what, what I enjoyed. So that was the first sort of thing. It's like people just said to me, why don't you, you see if you can, why don't you send a tape to Debbie for, for Zone and stuff? Uh -huh. Now, I'm not saying I was good enough, yeah. but it's something I wouldn't have done because I wouldn't have wanted to put that much pressure on myself. Absolutely. And, when, did, I look, yeah. and when I look back at it, like, um, uh, it, it was panic attacks and stuff because like I'll be 10 minutes into a set sometimes and I would I would say to Ixie or to Dan do you want to take over for me and they would say why and I would just say oh I just feel a bit sick or something like that mm. and they'd be like I oh, no problem because anybody getting extra time yeah absolutely buzzed off it so I was covered there do you know what I mean absolutely so it was like my safety net if you know what I mean and that's why I wouldn't sort of go anywhere else I mean to me at the time I would have in an ideal world, I would love to have done Zone Early Days or, or Sequins. And, yeah, yeah. You know, because they were the two big... The main, big ones, yeah. The, the mainstays, so... You know, and then, as I say, I worked with the likes of Chris Baker, Andy Pendle, um, all the big DJs, Stu Davies, yeah. John Jay, and, and people like that when they would come to clubs uh, as guest slots. Yeah. So, yeah, that was like, as a young lad, one of the DJ that was what I would have wanted to have done. But in reality, in, in yeah, reality yeah, yeah. it was never going to happen. I mean, I, I'm, I, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying you know, I, I was good enough to, to be down there because, again... You were, got, no, but you were in the time and the place. I was in the, the time and the place yeah, yeah, and there wasn't as many DJs as what there is now. You know, you look yeah. now when there's 500 DJs as opposed to there was maybe a niche of 20, 25 of us right. at the time. I understand you, mate. Um, yeah. I want to carry this on. Um, and I, I, anyone listening, I can imagine they want to carry it on. Uh, like I've said for the last few guests, 
I want to get you back on again. Yeah. Because we've, well, we haven't even got to the millennium yet. Yeah. And like, uh, we'll have to tie it up for, for now um, because we've been going an hour and a bit. Um, I just want to ask you before you go. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to ask you your three favourite tunes because I, I, feel, I feel like I, I don't really want to. Um, I want to ask you, of, of that, if that time period of your life of, yeah. of when it was the Sashes, Park, Madison's, everything, yeah. what's one tune that, that that when you think of that tune, you think of them times? Well, I mean, I've heard you on previous pods asking mm. uh, everybody the, like the three tunes and I can't really choose, th I, I wouldn't have been able to choose three, oh. but the one that I always say stands out to me is the first ever tune i bought on 12 inch which was expansions move your body nice now that's you're talking that's even before i started djing yeah. but i don't know what it is that that tune sort of blew my mind and took me to the next level yeah uh, that's one of the you, your foot in the door yeah. and like, i yeah, mean yeah. if you if you want me to pre if you want to press me for the tune um i I think Amen Passion. That yep. I was one of, the, if not the first to play that round here. Yeah. Um, that that's probably one of the top tunes I can always remember. And Hurricane Power to Jump. That was right. another one. Again, I was the only one playing it round here at the time. Excellent, mate. Excellent. Um, what was I going to say? So we'll wrap it up now. Yeah. I, I asked everyone this: if you go to a Chinese, you're on your own. You're not yeah. with the family out. Chinese meal for one. What are you getting? I'm getting sweet and sour. No, I'm not getting sweet and sour. I'm going to get chicken Cantonese in Cantonese sauce yep. with boiled rice and seaweed. Excellent. Excellent, mate. Love it. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even need to exp explain on it because it's <laughs> quality meal. Um, right, we're going to finish up now. Um, is there anything you would like to plug? Um, well... To be honest, obviously, because we're doing two parts, mm. um, I would have done. I'll, I'll, I'll do my plugs at, at the second part because, as as you know, I've still got quite a lot to tell. A lot to go through. So, but just a quick one. Um, I have been doing a couple of events lately for uh, Gary, uh, like in in association with Gary McKee. Anybody who doesn't know Gary, Gary is a lad that's doing a marathon every single day for a year. Yeah. So you imagine what what he's putting his body through. And um, that's in association with Macmillan Cancer and Hospice at Home. So I will get a link that you can put on. Yeah. Um because to me that's it it's in in your main what he's doing. Oh, a marathon every single day. So yeah. if I was gonna donate some money to charity and stuff um, it will be to that. It will be to that, and I will touch on charity and stuff on part two. No problem. Uh, I'll leave the link in the description for it. I'll get I'll get it off you, and then you can just fire it over, and I'll put it in. Um, I appreciate you coming on, mate. It's been an absolute blast. Wicked, class, nice one. Hope you all enjoyed it. Don't forget, check out all the other episodes as well. I'll be grateful for that. Thank you very Th much. Thanks, Mucker.